In this video I want to show you how to deploy a Django project to the Python Anywhere server. So this demo project uses local bootstrap CSS file. For the sake of demonstration I didn't use a CDN. Also the project has one model, the post. We can see it here. And in the admin panel we can edit and format this post with a tiny MCE plugin. As you can know, Django Admin uses its own CSS styles, and the Tiny MCE plugin also uses its own CSS and JavaScript files, static files, that we have to handle in an appropriate way. Okay, let's build a, a tiny Django project from scratch. We have to use a virtual environment. If you don't know what is it and uh, how to use them, consider watching of my video on this topic. I use virtual env. To install it, use pip. To create a new virtual environment, use the virtual env command. Or you can use the built in the env command. Then I have to activate it with the source command. Usually I use aliases to do it. It takes three characters to create, activate and open the folder in Atom Editor, like this. Now let's install Django and the tiny MCE. Then let's create a new project, a blog project for example. And let's change the directory into the blog PR folder. And here I want to initialize a new get repository. It's necessary to deploy the project to the Python Anywhere server. Also, let's create the git ignore file. I want to ignore all PyC files and PyCache. Also, it may be a good idea to add to the git ignore the SQLite database. But for the sake of the demonstration, I don't want to do it. This database will be used in production. Then I want to get the requirements.txt file. I want to remove all except Django at TinyMCE. Then I want to make an initial commit. Then let's create a new app. And now I need to create two folders, the template folder and the static folder. Inside the static folder I want to create the CSS and JS folders. And now in the settings py file I have to append the, the templates dares list with my templates folder. And uh, at the bottom of the file I want to create the static files dares list that gets almost the same value. Now Django knows about the templates and the static folders. Then I want to create a new route for my posts app. In the root URLs py file I'm appending a new path to the URL patterns list. Then in the posts folder I'm creating a new URLs py file. And inside it I have to define a new route too. Now I have to define the index function and it will just render the index.html template. Let's create the index.html template in the templates directory. I want to use the bootstrap CSS that I want to download and put into the CSS folder. Here I need the compiled CSS and JS. Click on the download button, 
open the archive and uh, let's put the bootstrap CSS to the CSS folder inside the static folder. And the next step is to use the bootstrap CSS file in the index.html template. Let's load uh, the static filter. And I need to create a new link to the bootstrap CSS file. Ok, let's define the basic layout of the page. And let's expand this formula. Now let's test the app. Ok, it's working because we can see that it uses Bootstrap CSS styles. Then I need a model. In the model spy file, I want to create a new model. It will have a title and a text. Now I have to make migrations and apply them. Then I want to add it to the Django admin dashboard. So in the admin py file, let's import the post model and register it. And now let's create a super user. Let's get into the admin panel. Ok, and I think it's time to add the TinyMCE plugin. First of all, I want to add the TinyMCE app to the installed apps list. Ok, in the root URL spy file I'm creating a new route, tinymc, and it will include tinymc URLs file. And the last thing I have to do is to change a bit my post model. And the text field of the post class will be an instance of the HTML field class. Again, let's make migrations and apply them. And that's it. Let's test it. And we can see that we got the TinyMC plugin here. Let's create a new post. My first post. And I want to use the lorem ipsum here. Let's change its formatting as you like. And now I want to change the index view. I want to get all posts from the database and I want to render this post list in uh, the index.html file. Let's look at the page now. Ok, it's working. And now it's time to deploy the project to Python anywhere. But I have to prepare my project for deploy. But actually it depends on the project. There is official deployment checklist 
and for this tiny project I have at least to hide the debug variable and the secret key variable. And a good idea, a good practice is to use .env file to store sensitive data. To load them automatically we can use the python.env package. Let's install it. Then let's create the .env file and define here the debug and secret key variables. Okay, in the settings py file let's import it. The .env package reads the .env file and loads its contents in the environment variables. And then in the settings py file we can define the debug and the secret key this way. I'm just reading the value of the debug key and the default value will be false. The same with the secret key. Also, we have to put the .env file to the git ignore. By the way, the good idea is to hide the secret key before the initial commit. And the last thing I have to do here, I have to define the static root variable. What is the difference between the static files there's and the static root variables? As you may probably know, when we deploy a Django project, we have to execute the collect static command. And the collect static command takes the static files from the static files there's. And the static root directory is the path where it will put all static files. It takes files from the static files there's path and put them to the static root path. If the static root will be in the settings files there's list, it will cause an error because the collect static command will get into the recursion. So, the static root is the path. Usually static files are stored in the var www directory but it depends on the hoster. Python anywhere uses the account name. In my case it'll be Red Eyed Coder Club and it's case sensitive because it's Linux. And by the way I forgot about media folder that can be used too. Let's define them. Media URL and media root folders. Let's create a new commit. Deploy, for example. And also, you have to create a GitHub repository. Copy this command and execute it here. Then I want to push my commits to the GitHub repository. And now you need to register a new account in Python Anywhere website. Don't forget to confirm your email. Then I need the account link. Then API token tab. Create a new API token. Then let's open the dashboard tab. Here I need the bash console. So I need Python 3, okay. And now I want to install Python Anywhere package. It's a bunch of scripts. PA Python Anywhere. And I need the PA auto configure Django. 
and then I have to pass the GitHub repository address to the project. It'll take some time. If something goes wrong, a typo may be in the settings py file or something like that, you can start this command with the dash dash nuke argument and it will start over. Let's create a super user. Let's say it'll be demo and the password will be the same demo, for example. Looks okay. Then let's get to the admin panel. And uh, voila, there is no Django admin CSS tiles. And uh, I'm sure that the tiny MC doesn't work too. How can we fix it? I need the web tab again. I'm scrolling down until the static files section. And the value of the URL key here should be the same as the value of the static root variable. I want to paste it here. and reload the app. Ctrl F5 in the browser and it works. And that's it. If you liked the video, please leave an upvote and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.